Namo Adidafa. Good morning. Thank you for joining me for today's daily practice check-in. Listen, listen, listen. This beautiful sound calls us back to our true home. The fifth mindfulness training. Aware of the suffering caused by unmindful consumption, I vow to cultivate good health, both physical and mental, for myself, my family, and my society by practicing mindful eating, drinking, and consuming. I will ingest only items that preserve peace, well-being, and joy in my body, in my consciousness, and in the collective body and consciousness of my family and society. I am determined not to use alcohol or any other items that contain toxins, such as certain TV programs, magazines, books, films, and conversations. I am aware that to damage my body or my consciousness with these poisons is to betray my ancestors, my parents, my society, and future generations. I will work to transform violence, fear, anger, and confusion in myself and in society by practicing a diet for myself and for society. I understand that a proper diet is crucial for self-transformation and the transformation of society. This morning we are finishing the section on the four bases of clinging from Ajahn Suchito's book, Kama and the End of Kama. Much the same thing occurs with the next layer of clinging, to views, typified as views of becoming and non-becoming. These are the ways we extend out of the present direct experience. There's a tendency either to conjure up a future or to refuse to consider it to either add a purpose and a trajectory in life or deny that there is any purpose to get involved with building or developing things or to say that nothing can really be done that everything's impermanent so there's no point this is the underlying bias of becoming non-becoming that creates worlds that solidify and spin and they can do so with great conviction and passion this is the passion and clinging that initiates kama, first in the mind, then in the speech, and so on. But you don't get out of cause and effect through trying to get it all finished, and solid, and real. Because once kama is followed, it continues to set up new goals. But saying that there's no goal, that it's all empty, then let's not bother with the future, also has its effects. Failure to consider cause and effect definitely affects our action in the world. Even our attempts at getting enlightenment can follow these underlying biases. Is it about having the ultimate experience of deathlessness, or at least a few rewarding ones? Or is it about the final cessation of Nibbana? Either way, the clinging to these ideas comes from fundamental views that imagine some timeless ground of being, or blissful oblivion as the goal. And these depend on whether our self-view inclines towards boundlessness or towards vanishing. We probably switch from one to the other dependent on whether we're feeling upbeat or fed up or just as our energies fluctuate. But in either case, we base the views on a self at the core of it all. Of course it doesn't make sense because the underlying bias varies. One moment we want contact and experience and the next we want to get away from it. Who's doing that? Which is what it all comes down to the last level, that of clinging to self. Clinging to the tendency of becoming generates the sensed self, but that sense itself is a designation occurring in the mind, and it changes all the time, from confident and relaxed to anxious and tense. Notice that as clinging affects the mind, 
and intensifies its passion with regard to any form, any thought, any world, so those feelings and impressions become solidified into a self who is the agent or victim of the world. And that world, whether it be a sublime, immaterial, ultimate reality, or the authentic, pure Buddhist tradition, or the benighted and unjust world of geopolitics, is then regarded as very solid. And out of that comes a passion and inclination with regard to the world. Thus patterns get established that are sensed as me. Then the good gets tainted with pride and conceit, and the negative arouses despondency or irritation. There's plenty of room for suffering, and no end to the goings-on that occur around all that, but essentially self and world arise interdependently as two ends of the same designation process. I can't get liberated, but through the release from clinging, self and world do not arise. So the four bases give us windows through which to contemplate clinging, because in themselves material food and the rest of it are useful. Rules and customs are useful guides, and vision provides focus for meaningful work in the here and now. Also some sense of self, some reference to your own energies, inclinations, and skills is essential in order to do anything well. But there is also a need to witness and contain the passion and clinging around all this. This is the purpose of cultivating parami, but you don't resolve and clear the mind with parami alone. To resolve and clear the tendencies of ignorance and becoming, and becoming takes factors of awakening, bojanga. May all beings be well, may all beings be happy, may all beings be peaceful. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Thank you for joining me today, and I hope you have a very wonderful and pleasant weekend.